All new right here at six o'clock, a series you will only see right here on WHAS 11 News, The Road to Reform. It focuses on Louisville's path forward under federal oversight and what it could mean for our city's crime and your tax dollars. Isaiah Kim Martinez and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton traveled out of state to a city with boundless parallels for perspective. We're here in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana, that actually shares a lot of similarities to Louisville, Kentucky. High crime, killings at the hands of police, community distrust, and soon a future under federal oversight. But what does that all look like? We traveled here to find out. The Big Easy at dusk is a sight to see. The heart of the tourist district, beaming as the sun sets. Only in New Orleans, y'all. The flags proudly manifesting the city's roots. The fleur de lis stamped just about everywhere you can look, including City Hall and police headquarters. Michelle Woodfork. I am the uh, interim superintendent of the New Orleans Police Department. Describes her home city. Small, big city is what I call it. In a way that may sound familiar to those in the Derby City. We don't buy groceries, we make groceries, we don't, you know, we, we don't shake hands, we hug. We all know what high school each other went to. It takes all of 10 to 15 minutes to get most places. All of that makes it easier to get to know um, the public, to be in the communities, to know the culture. But as tight knit as these two communities are, they've also both been deeply wounded by catastrophic moments for New Orleans in 2005. Most apparent during Katrina which seems like yesterday to most people. And for Louisville, March of 2020. So when you hear the name Breonna Taylor, what comes to mind for you? Oh, just the pain, just the, the, the horror and the pain. Prosecute the police! There are the events that pulled the curtains back from what many in marginalized communities say they already knew existed. Police brutality and police murder. Systemic problems within the police departments. No one knows any better the crimes of the police, but the people that have to live under that kind of condition. A history of cover-ups. The investigations were slanted. To, the investigations would, would leave out evidence if they if they needed a particular outcome and a culture of corruption. You know, there are certainly good cops, uh, but there have been, you know, a, a large number of bad cops in New Orleans. The cities are also tied together in high rates of violent crime, some of the most troublesome in the nation. We have carjackings, robberies, burglaries, you name it, in broad daylight. And and there's no no sign of substantial slowing. And now they find themselves in the midst of a common push for reform, a more honorable police department and a safer community. What do we have to do to stop this stuff, How to stop the cycle? Both cities are leaning on the Justice Department to provide a roadmap to rebuild through what's called a consent decree, an agreement between the feds and a local government to implement change, where a federal judge monitors progress and determines compliance. The key difference, New Orleans has been under one for some time. We were supposed to be in it for like six years. Right now, we just passed our the 10 year mark. With no end in sight. In New Orleans, with senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton, I'm Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11 on your side. Louisville has agreed to a consent decree in principle with a months long negotiation process to start soon. A mayor's office spokesperson telling us they are waiting the first draft from the DOJ. The big question for our community's purposes, has the consent decree in New Orleans worked? Well, the answer is very much mixed. Our series continues tomorrow night right back here at six o'clock. We also have a full 30 minute special you can only see here on WHAS 11 News that starts at 530 this Thursday.